What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. My name is Justin and on my channel I talk about all things real estate, money, and self-development. And for today's video, I'm going to share with you how you can finance your next deal. I'm going to share with you five ways you can finance your next deal and make sure you stay till the very end of the video because I have one bonus tip for you at the very end. And also, if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you subscribe to my channel and then click on that bell for notifications. But let me get right into it. So the first way you can finance a property is to use cash. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you have cash in your bank account, you go to your bank account, you pay straight cash. I mean, it's not cash, you're paying it straight from your account, but you're wiring most likely the money. So that's the most straightforward way. That's rule number one. The second way you can finance a property is to use a conventional loan. Now this is actually the loan that I used to get started when I bought my first home two years ago when I was 21. This loan is typically a 30 year loan or 15 year loan depending on what you choose. They're relatively lower interest rates because you're going through conventional banks and you know they're not really made for fixer uppers so if the home is in very tough condition or rough condition it's likely that you will not be able to get a conventional loan for that property because they have to actually run an appraisal lenders the appraiser has to look at it and see if the home qualifies but for these conventional loans these banks actually will look at your credit like they'll look at your credit they'll look at your bank statements they'll look at your w-2s they want to look at everything to make sure that you are qualified to actually purchase this home so that's a downside to using a conventional loan but it's kind of the standard loan that a lot of people use just to buy properties so that's number two the third way you can finance a deal is through hard money now I love hard money. Hard money is actually how I flipped my very first home. Hard money is essentially another lender, but they're not charging those low rates like conventional lenders are. They're charging interest rates like eight to 14% interest. And you probably are already thinking, why the heck would you go with a lender that's gonna charge you that high of interest? And the reason is because they'll allow you to get the deal done. You really have to do whatever it takes. And so if I'm going for a home and it's a fixer up or it's just messed up, and a conventional lender will not lend for this and I don't have the cash myself, my next step is I'm probably gonna look for a hard money lender to lend me at this high interest rate so I can flip the home. A good thing about hard money lenders is that they don't really look at your personal finances. They really just look at how good the deal is, which honestly, that's a really good thing too because now you get like a second opinion on how good the deal actually is. And if they say it's not a good deal, then maybe it's a sign that you should not buy that thing. So that's a good thing about hard money. Typically, they will charge, like I said, rates of eight to 14%. They'll charge points oftentimes. And so points, if you're unfamiliar, they're just a percentage of the loan amount they give you. So say if they're lending you $100,000 and they charge one point, that means at the time when you purchase the home, they're gonna charge you $1,000. Plus, they're going to charge you all the interest for however many months you hold it after. So those costs, they really can start to add up. But like I said, if that hard money loan is going to allow you to get the deal, use it. It's there for you. So that is number three, hard money. The fourth way you can finance a deal is through private money. Now, private money is kind of that end all be all. This is where everyone really wants to end up. And what it is, there's not really an exact definition, I don't think, but private money is essentially anyone any friend relative any person you know who is not like a hard money lender or a conventional lender so any person who's willing to lend you some money to purchase a deal that is a private money lender there's like a person pretty much someone you know maybe you don't even know willing to lend you money in exchange for a percentage or an equity split of the deal and let me explain to you what i mean by that so they can act like a hard money lender in the sense that they could choose to charge you interest for lending you the money, which is what a lot of people do. And that's really ideal for you as the investor. But if you are newer and they want to maybe make more profit because you're newer and they're willing to take some more risk, you can also do something called an equity split. And now what this means is that instead of you paying them interest every single month for lending you money, they actually will partner, essentially partner up with you on the deal and whatever profit comes out of it, they're gonna split the profits. And you know that's completely negotiable between you and that private money lender. A lot of people go 50-50 on things, but you know, like I said, depends on the situation, depends on your experience. 
but that's a really good way to get a deal done if there's no other way that you could find. So private money is really great because it allows you to use none of your own money into deals. Hard money lenders, they often ask you to put a percentage down, like they might ask you to put 10% down, 15% down. With private money, it's all negotiable. It depends on your private money lender, which is really sweet. And as far as the interest rates go, there's really not a range of what's possible. It depends on your lender. So say if you go to a rich uncle of yours, and I'm thinking of my uncle right now, he's, that's so funny, but say you go to a rich uncle of yours, and you go to them and you say, hey, do you want to fund this deal? And they say, sure, I will lend you money for this deal. And then you ask them, well, what kind of interest rate would you like? And for some people, a lot of their money is just sitting in their bank earning 0.00001%. And so for them, they might just say, you know, 4% sounds pretty good to me. And so that's your rate. But for some people, you know, they might have a lot of money in the stock market and they, you know, they might be earning 7% return in the stock market. So they might tell you, you know, I really would like a 9% return on my money. So it really depends on the lender. There's no range or set in stone interest rate that you should use for private money, but it's a very, very good tool to use to get deals done and typically, not always, but it's, I don't wanna say reserved, but it's almost kind of reserved for the people who either have some type of experience doing these flips or they just have some type of rapport, crazy rapport built with people so that people trust them actually lending them money. Cause like, I mean, these are not very cheap deals. Like sometimes you might run into a deal and you have a $200,000 purchase and you need $200,000 plus maybe $50,000 of a rehab. So you're literally going to people and asking, hey, you, you got $250,000 to, to lend for me? And so if you are not a trustworthy person or you don't have some type of track record, it might be hard to convince someone to lend you some money. But that is the fourth way, private money. The fifth way you can fund a deal, and this is one of the more creative ways, is called seller financing. Now seller financing, it comes in two forms, it could be I mean the seller financing or it could be subject to. Now I'm going to start with the seller financing. For seller financing, now let's say the seller owns the home free and clear and you go to the seller and you cannot agree upon a price. You know, your price is maxed out, his is right here. You just cannot find that middle ground. Well, you can offer the seller something called seller financing. And so you can go to the seller and if he owns a home free and clear, after talking to him and figuring out what's important to him and what he plans to do with the money after selling the home, like what is he going to do with the sale proceeds? If he says something of the sort of saying like, I'm probably just going to keep it in the bank and just save it. Well, you probably could offer seller financing and this is a situation to where say, you're going to go to the seller, you're going to offer the price maybe that they actually want, but you're going to say, instead of me getting a loan on it, I'm gonna actually have you be my lender and I can actually pay you a monthly amount instead of having your money just sit in the bank. And you just ask them, you know, how does that sound? Most of the time they're gonna say no because a lot of sellers just want all their money up front. But for the very few percentage that do say yes, that's a deal. So that's the first form of seller financing where the owner actually owns his property outright, free and clear, no mortgage. The other form is called subject to. Now this is when the seller has a mortgage. It's the same concept, but it's a little bit different. So let me throw an example at you. So let's say the seller wants $210,000 for his home and he has a mortgage on it for $200,000. What if you go to the seller, let him know that your intention is to hold short term and just to flip the home, maybe four to six months. And you can go to the seller and say, how about I buy the home I'll take over your mortgage, catch you up on mortgage payments if you're behind on mortgage payments, which will help his credit. And in the process, how about I pay you a monthly interest rate? And also, like, what if I just give you a down payment, down payment of $10,000? How does that sound? Most of them will say no, because in this situation, you would be the one to take over title. So you would be the owner of record, but the seller would still be under the mortgage and Sellers a lot of times don't want to be on the mortgage if they don't own the home, but some love it because some would love to have that $10,000 as a down payment and they would love to get a little bit of interest for six months and then at the end, get that purchase price that they wanted when I actually flipped the home and pay the lender, which is the seller. So that's the other option of seller financing subject to. To recap, the five ways you can finance deals right now 
is cash, conventional, hard money, private money, and seller financing. Now those are the five ways, but I also promised you a bonus tip, and that tip is to make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on that bell for notifications. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you at the next one.